You are listening to the Creative Women's League podcast. I'm your host and biggest fan, Kate Tony. Creative women entrepreneurs all over the globe turn to the Creative Women's League for social media advice, marketing help, and to get their minds in the mode to achieve bigger than they ever thought possible. Whether it's hearing the journey of your favorite creative badasses or the expert business advice shared, CWL is here for you with a whole lot of laughs, heaps of honesty, and endless support. Because over here, we know the secret sauce to building your creative empire all starts with motivation, inspiration, know-how, and community. If you want to exceed every goal, defeat the doubt, cast out fear, and connect with your fellow creative wonder woman, well, my dear, it's time to join the Creative Women's League. What's up? What's up? What's up? You know, I am obsessed with the house that we moved into. I really like it. I really like the neighborhood. We've had a very good time here, but it is so loud for recording podcasts. (laughs) It has tested my editing skills, that's for sure. How are you doing today? I am so happy to have you here. You know, I always am. I love you guys so much. I love getting to hang out with you right here on the podcast. Of course, if you just can't get enough of me, head on over to the Instagram at Creative Women's League. This is where the majority of our community takes place. I love getting to know each and every one of you and your businesses. It's been so much fun to watch these businesses grow and take shape. And sometimes they have completely changed from where they were a year ago. And that's okay. You're growing and you're learning. And I am so excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we can take your business beyond anywhere you ever dreamed of. Okay, I promise I'm here for you. So go follow on Instagram at Creative Women's League. And of course, we have the Facebook group, Creative Women's League on Facebook. If you like what you hear on this episode and every episode, please subscribe. It is the number one way that you can help support this podcast. Get it out to more listeners. Show me your love. (laughs) All those fantastic things. If you are subscribed to the podcast, or if you just now decided you are going to subscribe, go ahead and send me a screenshot on Instagram or on Facebook or whatever. Send me a shot of that little subscribe button highlighted because I want to feature you on the Creative Women's League stories, okay? I love it. Another great way to get featured on the stories is to use the hashtag Creative Women Rock. Quickly approaching 4,400 posts over there. I can't even fathom that. It is so cool. But that's what this community does. Support one another, show each other what we are doing, what we're made of. It's fantastic. I love it so much. (laughs) You guys are the best tribe anybody could ever ask for. I love it. Like I said, I genuinely have watched your businesses grow. I have seen your prowess on social media grow. Your marketing skills blossom. All these wonderful things because you're getting out there every day. You're learning the tips and tricks. You've got the know-how and you're using it and always gaining more. It's so cool. Recently, we have talked about vibes in a business. And the quote I always use is your vibe attracts your tribe. Now, like I said, we talked about how the vibe is attracting your tribe, but what are other things that you can be doing to attract your tribe? And what the hell do I mean by a tribe? Your tribe are those people on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Facebook, out there in the world who truly care about you and your message. They love seeing you succeed. They would walk 500 miles to support your business. If you were sick and they heard about it, they would bring you soup all the way across the U.S. (laughs) Now, I definitely have some tribe members like that. And the CWL tribe is always growing, always new members coming in and making this community more vibrant, more loving, more supportive. So how do you do something like that? What are some ways that you can draw people in? Because once you have your tribe, you also have your super fans. Your super fans are there on launch day. 
Your super fans are sharing your product with friends. Your super fans are buying your product <laughs> and giving it to all their friends. I have a bunch of super simple steps you can start to use in your business right now to start attracting your tribe. Not tomorrow, not later this week, not let's plan it out. No. With your next post, you can start to change the game. In the next half hour, you can start to bring in more people who are ready to love you and be the super fans that you are wanting. So first things first, you have to have an engaging Instagram. There was actually a podcast episode and a YouTube video. It's one of the few actual YouTube videos we have, if you'd like to go over there, about how to have an engaging Instagram. It's so incredibly important that you make sure your Instagram is engaging first and foremost. If your Instagram is not engaging for the tribe you are trying to attract, then all these other steps are going to be for naught, unfortunately. It'd basically be like walking into a river, all these salmon just swimming right to you. You could have a bazillion of them, but you didn't bring a net. You didn't bring a fishing pole. Dang it. (laughs) Okay. So let's make sure your net is fabulous. Let's make sure it speaks to who you are. It draws your tribe in and it makes your tribe want to engage with you. You can go hear all about that in the episode. Look it up. It was a create your biz episode called creating an engaging Instagram. This is something that will be an ongoing project of yours and it will change. Sometimes your Instagram followers will be very into answering your questions. Sometimes they won't be. It's okay. We can roll with the punches here. Just make sure that you've got beautiful, gorgeous pictures for them to head over to interact with. You are very present for the people who you are trying to attract. Two, you have to be authentic, like 100%. Do not be acting like you're some millennial influencer princess if that's not who you are. Now, if you love millennial pink and pumpkin spice lattes, I am here for it. You can do exactly as you please. Just make sure that when you're talking to your audience, you're doing it with your authentic voice, your most authentic voice. Don't be afraid to be unique don't be afraid to be yourself. Okay. We are all going to love you. We do not need to see a dumb copy of a great product. Okay. We need you to be authentic, be exactly who you are. And anytime you copy somebody else, or you're trying to be somebody else in a way that is not true to yourself, you will get sussed out. Okay. I promise you we will catch on. Now this step, I want you to think about this in every other thing I talk about in creating an engaging Instagram, any of the things that I say after this, create an engaging Instagram, dot, 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 and be authentic. (laughs) Uh, Get personal on Instagram and be authentic. So everything else, remember, this is the key, the authenticity, who you are, who you are. That's what we want to know. Okay. This is one that I preach about a lot. Get personal on your Instagram. It's a lot easier for people to feel connected and to feel like crazed super fan levels of love for a person in a brand, not just a brand. I love Coca-Cola. Like I love Coca-Cola. It's even just like red and beautiful. And they always have the cutest products And I know I shouldn't drink it. And if I could, if there were no health (laughs) concerns, I would drink like a 24 pack a day because I just love it. You know, I really like the brand, but I'm not married to it. (laughs) I don't feel connected to Coca-Cola other than the fact that my grandpa used to work for them and I like the product. But let me tell you about go-to skincare. I am obsessed with go-to skincare. I would walk 500 miles for that product. Because I know Zoe Foster Blake. I know the woman behind the product. I know her story. She shares her family and her ups and her downs and getting bangs with curly hair. (laughs) I know her and I feel like I would go to bat for her. So don't worry about it. You don't have to tell sob stories all the time. You don't have to be telling people about your grandma and how her death really affected you. Yeah, that's okay. You don't have to do that. 
but you can tell a funny story about what happened to you yesterday. You accidentally sat in some gum. You know what I mean? You can still show a human side to yourself, the little funny things that happen to you and your family and your pets. Get personal. Don't be afraid of it. If you want to be somebody, I'm more like this. I am. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I can tell you guys all these personal stories. If that's who you are, don't be afraid to do it. Really don't be afraid to do it. If it's not who you are, it's okay. You can get kind of personal. Think about how you'd get personal with people at work, right? You'd laugh and be like, oh, my dog did the silliest thing last night. You wouldn't tell them that that was after you were sitting on the couch crying. And that's okay. They didn't need the whole story. And if you feel more comfortable not sharing the whole story, that's okay. And don't forget, the caveat is you have to be authentic. Don't be like, oh, this is so weird that I didn't work out twice this week, but I normally do. And it's not real. It's not true to who you are. Be you. Get personal. We want to love you so much. Another great way to start to find your tribe. And a lot of these The first half was about you, right? And this second half is a lot more about you going out there, right? Grassroots movements. (laughs) So one of the great ways that you can get out there amongst your people is by joining a Facebook community. Yeah, duh, right? What is your business about? What are you all about? Who is your ideal customer? Go join Facebook groups where they are, asterisk. Do not go in there trying to sell people stuff. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. (laughs) Don't go in there and start posting. I have this great quilt pattern and you all need it. No, that is not what I mean at all. You're going to drive people crazy and push them away from your brand. But you can get in there and get involved. Get your hands dirty. If somebody asks a question about, okay, let's say your quilt pattern designer. We have a lot of those in the community. Join various quilting communities. And when somebody has a question about batting, let them know, hey, this is what I use. This is why I use cotton batting. Get involved in there because eventually they're going to get very used to seeing you around there and being helpful. They're going to want to know more about you, or there'll be a perfect chance for you to let it slip that actually you have a pattern launching this weekend. Like I said, you aren't in there to do a hard sell first. You're in there to be a part of the community. And of course, don't just answer other people's questions and other people's posts. Get in there and get involved. Start making your own posts in there. Hey guys, this is what I'm working on. What would you do with the binding? (laughs) Whatever, it's okay. Just share with people. I love to show off what I'm working on. This is my quilt I'm piecing. It's a sample of a pattern I have coming out. What are you guys working on this weekend? Right? Get in there. That is not only going to be great for whoever is moderating the group. They want more engagement in their group. It's going to be great for all the members of the group and you. Hello. This is awesome. Win, win, win. There are different ones that you can join. Join Facebook groups about hobbies. There's one called mildly offensive fiber artists. And those are a bunch of hobbyists. They get in there, you're going to see, (laughs) you know, cross stitches with bad words. You're going to see crocheted penises. So if that's not your type, don't go join it. (laughs) But if it is for you, get in there, get involved. Brands also have their own Facebook groups now. Some of them do. Pin Up Girl Clothing. Uh, Laura Burns was on one of the episodes. And she has the pinup girl clothing lounge. So if you're making accessories that pinup girls would love, if you are a lifestyle blogger and that's the community you'd like to serve, get in there, get involved, start posting. And of course there's the creative women's league community. This one is support and community. This helps strengthen your bonds with other female entrepreneurs. Get in there, get posting. Because yeah, you're working with other business owners and you might be selling quilt patterns and you're talking to crocheters, but you never know. You never know what's going to come your way. I have seen it happen so many times where people have networked with other people. They don't really have any business to do together. 
But then what happens when that crocheter, <laughs> crocheter, hooker, <laughs> what happens when that hooker, that's not, they're kind of called that as a, okay, I'm not really being that crass. When their friend is like, you know, I really, I think I'm thinking about getting into quilting or I'm trying to look for this quilt pattern and they know you, right? So get in there, do it. Once again, be authentic when you do this. Don't get in there and start being fake because people will suss it out. Okay, one of my favorite things is to pick Instagram followers and be their super fan. So basically it is tribe karma, super fan karma. I wholly believe that what you give, you get. So if you want all these awesome, super engaged people and you scroll past everybody's posts on Instagram, not commenting, not liking, where is your karma? (laughs) Your karma is not coming back to you. Nobody else thinks that you do it, so they won't do it either. There is a little bit of pressure that we can use in our favor because I have heard it flat out from mouths of my friends from mouths of followers. Yeah, you always comment on my stuff, so I make sure to get in there and comment on a couple of yours. I've had friends say that. (laughs) And recently, I have done a terrible job at it. But truly, teach your followers how you want them to interact with you. Get in there. Make, and I'm not saying just be like fire emojis. No, get in there and say, I love those colors. I'm always like, if I am drawn to colors, I will tell people the colors in here are amazing because I am like a moth to the flame with colors. Ask them what's going on in the picture. How did you create this? What was your process like? Anything you can, but be authentic, be real. Don't comment for the sake of commenting. Don't do a bunch of thumbs up emojis. You're wasting everybody's time. The other thing is, is if you choose people in your community to be super fans for. Let's say you are a soap maker. Who do you admire? Go be their ultimate tribe member. And even though you're making your own soap and you may not be purchasing a whole lot from them, they will still appreciate it and you'll get noticed. You don't know. Once again, you don't know what will come from that. You could end up being best friends with this person you admire, or maybe they'll start following you, become a super fan of what you are doing. We just talked about it on the Beth Winterburn episode. She said there are times where she will refer customers, paying customers to friends of hers, to people she has barely met because she's like, their work suits them better. Huh? (laughs) Put yourself in the position for that. Become a super fan of somebody else. One of the things I did with people who I really wanted to be engaged with was I turned on notifications. How many times have you told people to do it? How many times have you actually done it? I have about five to 10 friends, uh, people I admire, people I really want to stay in the know with. They are on notification. My notifications are turned on for them on Instagram. The second they post, I know about it. And I can be one of the first people to post, which even if I forget about it and come back to it later, whatever. But I'm always there. Once again, I'm big into the karma of it all. If you're telling other people to do it and you aren't doing it, and then you're shocked that your fan base isn't doing it, your tribe isn't doing it, like, come on, it's a no-brainer to me. Of course, Instagram gives you the option now to follow a hashtag. So when we follow a hashtag, it now pops up in our feed. There's a few different ways you can use this. Once again, you can keep up with people in the community with you. My knitters out there can follow your favorite knitting hashtag. I don't know any knitting hashtags. I haven't knit in so long. And then it just pops up in your feed like normal. So you can stay on top of these things. You can be commenting all the time. I like it. I follow the hashtag creative woman hashtag. (laughs) I said hashtag too many times. I follow the creative woman hashtag and I like it because when it pops up in my feed, I remember, oh yeah, I should go look through that for a minute and go spread the love and the comments and the likes and get engaged with other creative women for a little while. So I like that for that reason too. Also because, you know, if it just pops up in your feed, you can comment on that one and move along. It can be for the community you're a part of, for a brand you want attention for, whatever. 
Think about a couple. I wouldn't follow too many of them. It's just going to gum up your feed. Just like I wouldn't follow too many people. I made that mistake. We will talk about that in a future episode. But follow a few. You know what I'm going to say, right? You got to be authentic when you're commenting there too. (laughs) You just have to. (laughs) Okay. This one's hard to do. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I'm really closed off to it and other times I'm on top of it, but it's the most important. Pay attention to what works. If you are working your ass off in Facebook groups, trying to be this ultimate Facebook group member, and it has brought you two followers, it might be time to put that on the back burner. (laughs) But if you've started following a hashtag and you have found a bunch of new followers and raving fans, then maybe you need to be focusing more of your energy there and less on the Facebook groups. The biggest thing I want to impart into you and something I've become better at and more intrigued by is experimenting with your Instagram. Get out there and do it. Try it. See how people like it. See how people respond. See how it fits with you and your vibe and your branding. Ultimately, you need to trust yourself. I can talk until I'm blue in the freaking face. None of it matters if it doesn't work for you, doesn't work for your style, doesn't work for your tribe. (laughs) I wanted to keep that dramatic pause. Really listen to you above all else, pay attention to what works and never stop experimenting. Another thing is, another thing is be patient. Seriously. Sometimes you guys will write me and say, you told me to do this thing. I did this thing and it doesn't work. And I'm like, well, how many times have you done it? Twice. When did you do it? Five minutes ago. (laughs) I get it. I am the least patient. I, um, part of my intensity and go getter nature is that once I've set my mind to something, I want it done over with complete done perfectly by the way. And I want to start reaping the benefits of that thing. With a lot of Instagram, it is being the social media in general. It's being patient. You're going to put the work in. You're going to put the work in over a period of time. If it were easy, every Tom, Dick, and Harry would have their own businesses and be crushing it on Instagram. Be patient. Good things are coming for you. I know it because you keep your nose to the grindstone. You work your butt off and you're always willing to expand your knowledge. Can you tell I'm kind of in love with you? (laughs) Because I totally am in love with you. I have so much more to say on this topic. We'll be covering it a lot all the time. Because getting authentic, being personal, finding your tribe, these are all things that are still relevant. They're relevant from the first day of Instagram, and they are relevant now. There are a lot of things when Instagram first started that are not that relevant now, (laughs) not that important for you to stay on top of. But this is not one of them. Finding your tribe is huge. You can have 8 bazillion followers, but if they're all people who are just kind of not that interested, it's not going to translate to sales for you. And that's why we're here, right? I once heard that being Instagram famous is like being rich with monopoly money. And that's absolutely true. If you can't translate those followers, that tribe into sales for yourself. But we're going to do that because you're going to have an authentic, dedicated tribe. These people are going to go to the ends of the earth for you, your brand, and they will do nothing but buy your product, love on you, like your pictures, be commenting. I promise because you're doing the work, right? Hey, if you like the episode, if you want more episodes like this to just pop up on your phone and you don't have to go searching for them hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to send me a picture so that I can feature you on the Instagram. If you would like a hashtag to peruse and be a part of and find your community, you may use hashtag creative women rock. If you would like a Facebook community to get involved in, find your peers, some women who will support you and love you. Head on over to Instagram. Nope. Head on over to Facebook, Creative Women's League on Facebook. We're in there. Don't forget, you can't just, 
You're not just joining the Facebook groups to sell stuff. You're doing it for true connection. That is the point of all of this. Truly connecting with other people. That is where your sweet spot is. That is where we separate the Instagram geniuses, the Jenna Kutchers from the Instagram wannabes. Okay. I love you all so much. I hope this was helpful. Message me. Let me know what you thought about this episode. If you have any questions, ask them in the Facebook group so that other people get to see them. I get a lot of direct messages with questions, but they better serve the whole community if you put them in the Facebook group. Love you so much. I'll stop jabbing now. (laughs) Bye. still here? It's over. Go home.